Hey guys, today I'm going to do a double bass video. I know that's why a lot of people subscribe to this channel. I haven't done one in a minute. So I'm going to do one today. Um, I'm going to go through the double bass parts to three songs that I consider to be sort of early 2000s classic double bass licks. I'm not going to show you the whole song, uh, and I'm just going to play it on a pad, but I'm going to basically show you the main lick, the reason that people think these songs are cool for the drum parts. So uh, the first song I'm going to do is Spheres of Madness by Decapitated. It's off of the 2002 album Nihility. Uh, it was played by uh, the dude Vitek or Vitek. I don't know how you say it. He's Polish. That's not even his real name. But he died a few years back. Awesome drummer. I got to see him live one time uh, in person. I was uh, in the balcony, but sort of up on the side of the stage so I could sort of look right down on him. Dude killed it. I know the album has a really obnoxious uh, trigger sound and it sounds a little bit like it's been quantized. However, I saw him do it live. I know he can actually do it. So, uh, real drummer, not a drum machine. Okay, so the next one we're going to go through uh, is the sort of ending lick from uh, Ferdin Maltfindensland by Old Man's Child. That was a little bit more obscure. If you don't know Old Man's Child, you are missing out. It's like blackened death metal or like sort of death metal-ish symphonic black metal. Um, it's one of the guitar players from Dimu Borgir. I can't say any of these words, obviously. Um, and that came out on the album Slaves of the World, 2009. It's sort of the ending riff to the song, and it rules, and it's a cool double bass lick. And so we're going to go through that one. And then the last one we're going to do is Fear Factory Slave Labor, which is off the 2004 album Archetype. Ray Herrera was the drummer on that one. And... Um, Ray Herrera is like the epitome of a classic metal drummer. He's not the new school like blast beat, you know, death metal type drummer. He's the classic, you know, Dave Lombardo type drummer. Everything he played was heel up. He led a ton with the right foot, so I'm not going to do the alternate version of this lick. I'm going to do the sort of right footed heavy version. Um, he hit really, really hard, and his technique wasn't uh, good in a lot of cases, but he crushed it, and he also played, I saw him play live with Fear Factory before they started using drum machines and session guys and stuff, and, uh, and he absolutely crushed it the way that it sounds on the record. So um, these are performances that can be played live, and I've seen them played live, and the drummers absolutely nailed them, um, and they also sound good on the record, uh, depending on your taste for trigger sounds. Um, and they uh, all happened between 2002 and 2009, so early 00s, basically. And I consider them classic licks. Okay, so there's two halves to this. The first half is pretty easy. And I just play that all heel up. Then the second half, you got some bursts of four, so it's two groups of four uh, in little separate bursts. And, and I play those uh, floating style because they are pretty quick. Then you get four singles, then you get the same two bursts of four, then you get six singles. And when you put that together fast, it obviously sounds awesome. It embellishes the riff pretty well. Um, but so the, the only two things really in this lick are heel up single strokes and then um, what I do for floating singles because they're a lot faster. You could swivel them but I don't bother because it's just four hits in a row and the little um, those don't really require a lot of swiveling motion for me. So this one's also based on little groupings of fast notes followed by slow notes. In this case, the fast notes sort of lead into the beats. Um, they're kind of like uh, long roughs that kind of roll into the beat. So if I play it slower, it's like... That'd be like one repeat of it. Um, and so the first one doesn't start on the roll because that would be ahead of the beat but at the end there's the rough into the downbeat, so um, where the one is can be confusing if you just hear this pattern a lot of times over and over. Um, but I'll do it one more time, kind of slow. Or I guess that was two more times, slow. Um, 
But when I do it for real at full speed, the, uh, the slow groupings are a different technique than the fast groupings. So I kind of alluded to it in the intro that this could be played multiple ways. You could play it alternating. But I think the way that Ray probably did it is to do it all with the right foot because he was very right foot dominant. He played everything heel up no matter how fast it was. Um, and at least when I saw him play, that's what he did. So I would assume that he would do this the right footed way, which is... Um, although I've seen drum covers that do it both ways, I can't find any good you know, video of Ray doing it where you can see his feet. Um, so if you know what he did, let me know. But I'm pretty sure it was the right foot heavy version. So this is just a bunch of groups of three. Um, the right foot basically plays all the way through the lick consistently. And you just sprinkle in the lefts to get the groups of three. That's about it for that one. It seems easy. Uh, in practice, it's really rough no matter which way you play it. It gets tiring quickly. Cool. So those are some of the more classic licks in my repertoire uh, from when I basically started playing double bass. Now, if you've been playing double bass for like 30 years, uh, starting out with Slayer or whatever, these aren't going to seem especially classic. You know, they were only, uh, you know, 17 years ago was the oldest one. But you know, uh, it just it just depends on your uh, point of view. If you're in high school right now, these all came out when you're a baby. Um, so it just depends, I guess. Anyway, I think they're pretty cool licks. Um, hopefully that was somewhat instructive to see me play them fast and slow. Uh, and so if you have any other questions, let me know. I'm around. I answer my uh, comments pretty frequently. All right, thanks for watching, guys, and we'll see you next time.